Welcome to your next lesson on exponents. It'll cover section 8.2, which is powers and products. We're going to start right away with the power of a power property. What this means is if you have a power, like x to the m, and you're raising it to another power n, you multiply the exponents to get x to the m times n. So the key phrase here to write down is multiply the exponents. Now in this first example, we're going to show you a couple different ways about why this property works. So if you think back to 2 to the 6 squared, what that means is that you're taking 2 to the 6 and you're just squaring it. So you're taking 2 to the 6 times 2 to the 6. Um, if we follow the property that we just learned, it would be 2 to the 12. If you think about it another way, you could write it as 2 to the 6, completely expanded times 2 to the 6, completely expanded again. If you count how many 2's we have here, we do have 2 to the 12. Now obviously, you're not going to want to write out 12 2's to get this answer, so you'll want to use this property and take the shortcut. So for number 2, we'll do just that. If we have 10 to the 4th to the 3rd, we're going to do 10 to the 4 times 3, or 10 to the 12th. For number three, we have a variable base, but that doesn't change the rule at all. It would be y to the three times five, or y to the 15th. And in four, we have a variable for our base and our exponent. Um, and you'll note that if you take three times y, you just get three y. Our next property is the power of a product. Now, product means that we're multiplying something together here. So inside of our parentheses here, we actually have two bases, x and y. And then we're going to raise that to a power n. What you're going to do is you're going to give that exponent to each of the bases. So we're going to rewrite this as x to the n, y to the n. The key phrase here to explain this property would be to distribute the power to each base. And while we're doing this, we're going to actually be mixing in some of the properties that we've already learned. So from here on out, the examples are going to get a little bit more complicated. So looking at our first example, you'll notice we have two bases inside the parentheses. We've got x to the second and y to the first. So I'm going to take that 3 and I'm going to give it to each of the bases. So I have x to the second to the third and y to the first to the third. Now if you look at each of these bases separately, we can just apply the property that we were just working on, the power to a power, and we're going to multiply. So we end up with x to the sixth, y to the third. Notice how we're writing those in standard form. We're putting the variables in alphabetical order. Now in number two, we've got three bases. We have a to the first. We're going to take that to the fifth. We have b to the second. We're going to take that to the fifth. And c to the fourth, raised to the fifth. And you don't have to necessarily show all the work here. You can just multiply. So a to the fifth, b to the tenth, c to the twentieth. And we got that just by multiplying those powers together. Example three is really similar. So um, we're already kind of showing the work here, but you may want to press pause and try this problem on your own. But you have your three bases in the parentheses, and we're going to give the four exponent to each of those bases. We apply our power of a power rule. So we get x to the 8th, y to the 12th, z to the 16th. Example four is really similar. Um, this time we've got a constant as one of our bases as well, but we're still going to treat it the same way. It's 8 to the 1st to the 2nd x to the 5th to the 2nd, and y to the 7th to the 2nd. We apply our property here. Only 8 to the 2nd we want to expand out. You always want to expand out your coefficients here when we're simplifying expressions. So we have 64, x to the 10th, because we're multiplying those exponents, and then y to the 14th, again multiplying those exponents. The next little topic we want to look at are powers of negative 1. And this is going to become really important as we move into some more complicated examples. So if you think about negative 1 to the second power, all that means is we're taking negative 1 times negative 1. If you recall your rules of integers, a negative times a negative is a positive. So the result here is a positive 1. Let's expand out negative 1 to the third. That would be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. If you multiply the first two negative 1's together, you get a positive 1. And then if you multiply that positive 1 times the negative 1 that's left over, we end up with the negative 1. Now you're going to start to notice the pattern here. If we take negative 1 to the 4th, we end up with a positive 1. The reason for this is we've got an even number of negatives. So the two negatives in the beginning are going to pair up. The two negatives in the end are going to pair up. 
and we end up with a positive one. Negative 1 to the 5th is a negative 1. Negative 1 to the 6th is a positive 1. And negative 1 to the 7th is a negative 1. So the pattern here is if you have a negative base with an even exponent, the result will be positive. Now, notice I said a negative base. I didn't just say negative 1. If I had a negative 2 to the second power, that's going to give me a positive 4. If I have a negative 2 to the fourth power, that's going to give me a positive 16. So this extends beyond numbers besides a 1. Now, if we have a negative base with an odd exponent, we're going to end up with a negative answer. And again, this extends beyond just powers of 1. If you have any negative number and you're taking it to an odd exponent, you'll always get a negative result. So we're going to keep that in mind as we move forward with the next few examples. In example one, you may look at that and say that we only have one base inside that parentheses, but it's really important that you put that, that one in there. So actually we have two bases. And you always want to put your bases in parentheses before you raise it to the power. So here we have negative one to the fifth, and then we have x to the first to the fifth. Now, we just talked about a negative 1 to an odd exponent is going to end up being negative. So that's going to stay negative. And the result is a negative x to the fifth. You don't need that 1 there. You can write it, but you don't have to have it. Now, number 2, we don't have any parentheses. So there actually isn't any distributing of the exponent that I have to do here. Um, what you want to do is you still want to put that 1 in there. But instead of that negative 1 also getting the fourth power, it's really like a negative 1 times x to the fourth. And you can just write that out. You can do negative 1 with a little dot and then the x to the fourth. So there's really nothing to do for this problem. I don't take that 4 and distribute it to the 1. I just leave it as is. So this one um, was actually already simplified for us. Number 3, we have two bases. We've got the negative 5 that we're going to raise to the third power. And then we've got the x to the first that we're going to raise to the third. Now, if you take a negative 5 to the third, that's like negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. We're going to end up with a negative 125. Multiply those powers on the x, and we get x to the third. So note again, we had a negative number to an odd power. It ended up as a negative answer. Now, number 4 is a little bit different. We've got this coefficient out in front, that negative 2. That is out in front. It does not get that 2 as the exponent like the other bases will. So we're just going to write it out there, and we're going to leave it out there for now. Now, as I distribute here, I've got a negative 4 in parentheses, and I'm going to take that to the second power. And then I've got x to the fifth, and I'm going to take that to the second power. So the negative 2 in front is just going to come down. A negative number to an even power is going to give me a positive answer. So that's going to end up being a positive 16. It's like negative 4 times negative 4. And then here, we're just going to multiply our exponents again, so we get x to the 10th. There's one last step. Now we're going to deal with that negative 2, and all I have to do is take negative 2 times 16, which gives me a negative 32. Bring down your x to the 10th, and you're done. All right, number 5. A little bit more going on here. We've got two different problems here that we're going to combine into one. So the first parentheses, we actually have three bases. So I have a negative 1 that I'm going to take to the 5th power. I've got x to the first that I'm going to take to the fifth, and then I have y to the first that I'll take to the fifth. Then we're going to finish up with the, the rest of it. I've got this x to the third to the second, and we're just going to go ahead and bring that down. Now when we start simplifying, a negative 1 to the fifth we learned is a negative 1. Again, it's that negative base to an odd power. We multiply the powers on the x, so we get x to the fifth. Same thing on the y, we get y to the fifth. And then we have to go ahead and do the x from the second part of the problem, and when we multiply those, we get x to the sixth. Now, a lot of you are going to think that you're done, but we actually have to keep combining, and this is going to take us back a couple rules ago. When you multiply bases that are the same, remember you add the exponent. So I actually have to combine those x's. So the negative 1 comes down as my coefficient. When I add the powers on the x's, I get x to the 11th, and then you just bring down the y to the fifth. So as long as you have like variables in a problem, you always want to make sure that you combine those. All right, our last example here is pretty similar to number five, just a little bit more stuff going on here. In that first set of parentheses, we have three bases. 
and actually that two should be outside and watch that carefully it's really tricky with these negative numbers so that negative three has to be in the parentheses and it has to be squared um, next we're going to take x to the seventh and we're going to square that and then we're going to take y to the fourth and square that in the second set of parentheses we have a negative one that's going to go in parentheses and we're going to take that to the third and then we're going to take x to the third to the third all right so let's start working here a negative three squared that's a negative number to an even power, so that's going to give us a positive. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. We're going to multiply the exponents on the x's to give us x to the 14th. Same thing on the y's to get y to the 8th. Now be careful here, put your dot, make sure you know you're multiplying. A negative 1 to the third power will give us a negative 1. When I multiply the powers on the x's, I get x to the 9th. Now again, this is one that we have to simplify, and if you think back to a couple lessons ago where we talked about multiplying monomials, we basically just regroup it. We're going to combine the coefficients here. So 9 times a negative 1 is a negative 9. We're going to combine the x's. And now we're adding the exponents because we're just multiplying with those bases. So you can go ahead and add those power. x to the 14th and x to the 9th will give us x to the 23rd. And then the y to the 8th, there aren't any other y's. So we're going to bring along that as our final term here. So it's negative 9, x to the 23rd, y to the 8th. Alright, this concludes your lesson on section 8.2. You are now ready to start the homework.